Imagine going to the doctor and having him tell you that your blood sugar was 748. I'll be sharing about an individual who had just that experience. But after getting home from the doctor, this person started investigating. They found Beat Diabetes' YouTube channel and had their A1C in the fives within a few short months. I'll also share about a man who had elevated fasting glucose, did some serious fasting, and his glucose actually went up instead of down for a while. But today his fasting glucose is under 80. What's the secret? Stay tuned and we'll talk about it. Well, I promised that I would do a video about what I've learned about YouTube uh, as a part of the Tuesday series, and I will do that, but I'm going to have to put a hold on that and get to something else for now. Uh, I've got a time crunch going on, and so that's going to take a little while to put my thoughts together and get that out to you. Right now, we're going to go over some of the comments. I've been uh, accumulating comments like crazy, uh, far more than I can really get to, but I'm going to get to a few of them today. And uh, they bless me. They teach me. I learn <laughs> from these comments as well as you, uh, as well as you learn from me. So anyway, here's somebody who said, in regards to the diabetic food debate, the best advice I've heard from Dennis is get a meter. Uh, Got to agree there. Everyone would tell me that oatmeal is safe for diabetics. Well, it may be for some, but not for me. And uh, let me underscore that. Maybe for some, not for me. Well, how does he know that? He tested himself. He says, steel-cut oatmeal caused my blood sugar to go to 193. And that, my friend, is too high. Uh, food companies will lie to you with no shame in their hearts. Cemeteries are full of loyal customers. Test your food. Well, I couldn't agree anymore. And of course, that's really at the heart of <laughs> what I try to encourage diabetics to do. Test yourself. Don't take my word for it. Don't take some famous doctor's word for it. Test yourself and see how foods affect you and how they spike your blood sugar. And I'm starting to hear this a lot. People saying things like, well, such and such a food raised my blood sugar to such and such a number. And everybody's got an opinion on foods, and some people say, oh, you can cure diabetes by eating a bunch of starches. Well, be sure and test yourself and see what those starches are doing to you. I don't, I don't go for that myself, and the reason I don't is not because I've got an internal bias against starchy foods, but because my blood sugar uh, meter has told me again and again and again and again and again and again that starches are not my friend. Now, if your blood sugar meter tells you starches are your friend, if you can eat a big old baked potato and uh, an hour or two later when you tend to peak, you find out that you peaked at a 118, well, good for you. Uh, you're obviously not <laughs> in the same category as me, but I sure can't do it. Lots of opinions, but a simple blood sugar meter uh, can give you the truth about your own situation. And let me say some people uh, try to suggest that because blood sugar meters aren't perfectly accurate, they're of no value whatsoever. And that is just plain wrong. Not the first part, that they're not perfectly accurate. I'll be the first to admit that. But to say that because they're not completely 100% perfectly accurate means you can learn nothing from them, well, that's just wrong. I've learned a tremendous amount from my blood sugar meter. And uh, if I eat a baked potato and one day it tells me I got a 222 and the next day it tells me I got a 205, so what? In both cases, when I jump over 200, that is not a good thing for me. So whether it's accurate to the exact uh, number and decimal, uh, no, it won't be. But it can sure give you an idea of how you tend to react to foods. So don't use that cop-out that uh, meters are not accurate and therefore uh, have no value at all. They have a phenomenal value. Even <laughs> a meter that's fairly inaccurate, some little cheap $10 Walmart meter is better than no meter at all. Okay, another comment. 
On May 27th, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. My blood sugar was 748. Wow, 748. I mean, that is phenomenally high. My A1C was 13. I watched your videos. I started your plan. I went to the doctor on September the 9th. So that's what, June, July, August, about four months later. I'm happy to say my A1C is down to 5.4. From 13 to 5.4. Are you kidding me? I mean, that's next to miraculous, and yet it's not really a miracle. It's just the right application of uh, some very simple principles. From 13 to 5.4 in four months. And there's, there are diabetics that struggle for years trying to get it down one point, and they'd, they're in the eights, and they'd be happy, and their doctor says just get it down to around seven, and they're struggling for years and can't do it. This person goes from, the thir from 13 to 5.4 four in four months time. He says, uh, I thank you for saving my life. I also lost 30 pounds in these months. I ate very low carb and drank no sugary drinks for those months also. Low carb, no sugary drinks. Well, yeah, that makes sense. I did a lot of intermittent fasting as well. Aha, there's the second secret weapon. The, weapon. the low carb is one weapon. The intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating is another. He says, I'm off of diabetes medications. Goodbye, metformin. Wow. And, you know, hopefully he's, he's off because his doctor said you don't need it anymore. Uh, but that is awesome. He's got great numbers. And some people are taking like four or five diabetic medications and they can't get down into the sevens. They're struggling in the eights, nines, tens. And he's down into the fives and he's taking no medication anymore. Your program works. Thank you. Well, let me just say this. It's not really magic. It's not mysterious, really. You see, an A1C is simply an average of how your blood sugar has been over the last three months or so. So if you can keep your numbers fairly low for a single day and then stretch it out to two days and then three days and then a month and then two months and three months, if you can do that for three months, you're going to see a phenomenal A1C. The A1C is not just some number that pops up out of nowhere. It is reflecting your daily average. So if you can get that daily average down, you're in good shape. Now, let me put this challenge to you. Or let, I'm not going to challenge you with this. Let's just think about this. Let's just pretend I'm a diabetic with a 12 A1C, uh, totally out of control blood sugar. And somebody comes up to me and uh, is a millionaire, and just for kicks, he says, if you can go low carb for one day and get your numbers significantly lower than they have been, I'll give you a million dollars. What would you do? Well, I'll tell you what I would do. I'd do it, you know. If I had to go to eating, you know, a hamburger and eggs for three meals, I, I'd do it. But, of course, you don't have to just do carnivore. You can, you can eat salads. But you can get anybody, almost anybody, can get their numbers down for a day, for a week, for a couple of weeks. And now it may take some time. I'm not saying it'll happen instantly. But almost anybody can see a difference almost immediately if they really wanted to. And if someone offered you a million dollars to get your numbers down in, say, a month's time, most of you would do it. But guess what? There's nobody offering you a million dollars. But how about a million dollars worth of good health? A million dollars worth of freedom from diabetes. How much is that worth? Well, the truth is no money can pay for that. And yet it's yours freely. Uh, there's no cost. There's no cost to watching these videos. And there's no cost to you cutting carbs apart from maybe you'll pay a little bit more on your food bill. But the truth is almost anybody would do it if someone offered them a million dollars. But there's nobody offering you a million dollars, but you can get tremendous results in good health and freedom from diabetic complications simply by slashing those carbs, doing away with the sugary drinks, doing away with the fruit juice, doing away with the starches. Uh, you can do it. Okay. This is from a lady. And she says, hi, Dennis, not sure if you remember my comment a couple of months ago. I was telling you my A1C was 13, my blood sugar was 550. 
This was back in December 2018. She says, I was hospitalized with ketoacidosis. Now, she says, I just got my A1C tested. It was 5.4, another 5.4, coming from another 13. So this is a, a, a very similar situation. She says, however, in this case, uh, continue to fast and count carbs has kept everything in check. My doctor high-fived me. He was actually speechless for a minute and overcome with joy. How about that? Doctor is speechless, overcome with joy, and gives his patient, lady patient, a high-five. And he said, I made his day. And he said, he was going to send all his diabetic patients to me, she writes. So yeah, she says, even as a joke, that's the best compliment I've ever received. Well, guess what? In some cases, that's uh, somebody who's been way up there with their uh, glucose and got it down into the fives uh, probably could help a lot of diabetics. And even if they didn't have a, a doctor's degree, and I'm not saying don't listen to doctors or don't go to doctors. I believe in doctors. But I am saying that it's good to find examples, and they're all over the place if you look for them, of people who were way high and they got their blood sugar down into the normal range. And 5.4 is just real close to normal. Um, and the truth is, I'm like her. I'm one of you, in case you hadn't figured that out. I'm a guy that should be uh, a raging diabetic with very high A1C, very high glucose. I should be that. But if I go to a doctor and he tests my A1C and it's in the low fives, he's going to say you have nothing to worry about. If he tests my fasting glucose and it's in the 90s, he's going to say, well, it's not great, but you know, that's not diabetic for sure. Well, if he told me eat a potato or gave me uh, you know, some kind of a glucose uh, test to see uh, how quickly I respond to, to high sugary foods or drinks, then he would say, yeah, you've got some issues. And I admit I do. Uh, still haven't solved that. But my numbers don't reflect it. I don't have the diabetic complications. And so uh, that's really what this channel is all about. Uh, uh, one of you guys telling you what has worked for me. And maybe it'll work for you. And we get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, responses and testimonies saying, yeah, it works for me. Uh, will it work for you? Talk to your doctor about it and see. Another comment. My fasting blood sugar was 110. Started fasting 48 and 72 hours. So 48 hours, two days, two 24-hour periods put together. 72 would be three days fasting. So pretty serious fasting here. Blood sugar initially went up to 129 and 134. So he's normally at a 110 uh, morning glucose, starts fasting and it goes up. Well, that can be depressing. Yet I've heard that again and again. So that's not all that uncommon. Uh, as best as we understand it, as best as I understand it, it's the liver dumping out the fat that's been accumulated and it's being converted back into sugar. It started as sugar, became fat in the liver. The liver dumps it back out. It becomes sugar again and uh, raises blood sugar, even though you're not eating one bite of food and all you're drinking is water or maybe a little bit of bone broth. Uh, and people are frustrated. They're confused. Why is it going up? It should be going down. Well, he says it, it went up to 129, 134. It was at 110 as a fasting number. But he's, And listen now. He says, I trusted the process. I trusted the process. I kept fasting. Within two or three months, it is dropped to, are you ready for this? Drum roll, drum roll please. It is now 77. His fasting glucose was at 110, started doing some serious fasting, went up to 129, 134, you know, around 130. But he kept at it. He says, I trusted the process. What process is that? Fasting, intermittent fasting or two-day fasting, three-day fasting here and there. And he says, now it's 77. My A1C was at six. Fasting is the answer for fatty liver and for diabetics, and for being fat as well. Well, sometimes you have to trust the process. You know, years ago, many years ago actually, I, I think I must have been around 30 or so, I had a problem with my brakes. I needed new brakes in my car. I didn't know how to do it. 
And I really didn't have the money to take it to a, a standard mechanic. Much of my life, I've been a poor guy. So those of you that don't have a lot of money, you know, I can identify. Uh, much of my life, I haven't had much either. Uh, I'll never forget the time I drove my family up to see my parents in a Yugo. And we had five kids. So my wife and I and our five kids all piled into a Yugo. If you know what a Yugo is or was, you don't see them anymore. It's a tiny little compact car that doesn't run very well and breaks down all the time. We pile seven of us into a Yugo, believe that or not. But I've never had a lot of money. So anyway, getting back to the story, I needed brakes on this particular car. I took it to a guy who was mechanically minded. He was not, uh, I don't believe, a professional mechanic, but he knew something about cars and he knew how to change brakes. And he offered to do it for me at no cost, but for me just to supply the brakes. So I, I bought the brakes brake pads and took them to him. Well, to, to change the brakes out, you have to pull off this inner part. Obviously, you take the tire off, but you also take the wheel apart and get to the brakes. But when he tried to take the wheel apart and get to the brakes, that uh, whole assembly was rusted together and he couldn't get it off. And so this guy acted like, well, that's no problem. And he got some uh, rust breaking fluid and squirted it around the brake assembly where it has to come off. And he started tapping lightly with a hammer all around that wheel, just tap, tap, tap. And while he tapped and applied more of this rust breaking, whatever it was, rust breaking fluid, he talked to me and he just acted like no big deal. You know, we're here together. Uh, let's just have a nice conversation. We made small talk. For I'm guessing, and I didn't time it, but I'm guessing it was around 15 minutes. He didn't seem in the least bit of a hurry. He didn't panic at all because the assembly wouldn't come apart. He just kept applying that uh, rust-breaking fluid and tapping with his hammer. Tap, tap, as we talked for about 15 minutes. And finally, the whole thing loosened up and it came apart and he was able to change the brakes. Well, I learned a phenomenal lesson from that fellow. Sometimes you have to just keep at it and trust that in time you'll wear it down. You know, if you can't beat it initially, just wear it down. Uh, that's how Muhammad Ali beat George Foreman in uh, Zaire, what was then Zaire. He just wore him down. He couldn't never have beaten him in the first round, but he just stayed there and did his rope-a-dope defense and ended up beating him. Uh, I forget how many rounds it took, but... Uh, and, and that's what you have to do with uh, diabetes is this guy says, I just trusted the process. What process? Keeping the carbs low, doing intermittent fasting, doing some two-day fast, three-day fast, if you can. And you, you, you should talk to your doctor about that. And, and if you're taking medicine or you're taking insulin, that can be dangerous. So I'm not just saying flat out everybody ought to be doing two- and three-day fasts. I mean, it could kill you. If you're taking enough medicine and you end up with a terrible hypo, so by all means, talk to your doctor and you may need to adjust your meds or your insulin. Uh, again, that's between you and your doctor. But if you can fast and your doctor gives you that freedom, uh, trust the process. And if you can't fast like that, uh, then just do the low carb and do some days where you do a carb fast, which means you just you eat almost a pure carnivore diet for that day and you, you eat next to no carbs at all. So uh, that can be a different kind of a fast. All right. Well, that's enough for now. I hope you enjoyed this. If so, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to our channel. Uh, I think you'll enjoy that and you'll get notified when we post new videos. God bless. See you again soon.